Hello and welcome to the NewsX Sunday Garden Roundtable. Well, we're here at the end of the year and what a year it's been. We've seen, well, the opposition putting up a fight. It began on a very optimistic note for Rahul Gandhi on the high of the Bharat Jodo, the win of Himachal. He won Karnataka also this year. But then, of course, came the round of the three assembly elections. What does this year say for the opposition? What does it say for Brand Modi? Is 2024 a walkover for the BJP? These are some of the questions we've been discussing as we look at the year gone by. Joining me on the round table is Sandeep Ghosh. He's a columnist and a political commentator. Um, Ashuto, she's a founding editor of SatyaHindi.com. Vinod Sharma, political editor of the Hindustan Times. Uh, Ashutosh, looking at the year gone by, what would you say are the highs and the lows really? You know, is it the death of the opposition, first of all? Why should we call the death of the opposition? I'll say the the one sentence which can define this year is is a massive erosion of democracy in this country, and that is that has become a trend and that will continue further. If uh, if uh, uh, so what is happening around, just look at 141 member of parliament has been suspended for doing what? If this has been the trend, then the parliament will stop functioning. And the, what is parliamentary democracy? Parliamentary democracy is not about majority rule, what the Gandhi has said. Gandhi has said when the majority is going to dominate over minority, there will be no democracy in this country. And this is exactly what is happening. Look at how many members of parliament has been disqualified and they've been uh, asked to vacate their houses for what they have done. Sanjay Singh, look at uh, Rahul Gandhi, look at uh, Mahua Moitra. But somebody who openly makes a communal statement in the in the parliament and he's been promoted and he's hailed as a new messiah of Hindutva. I'm talking about Ramesh Vidhuri. So where is parliamentary democracy in this country? Can you, if you make a statement like this publicly about any religion, about any person, you will be behind the bar. But the speaker has failed to take note of it. And the way the Mahua Moitra has been uh, uh, disqualified as a member of parliament, that shows the how intolerant the whole system has become. So I think that it is not about the death of, of, of opposition. Uh, I know the government wants uh, a one-party rule in this country to perpetuate for another 50, 100 years. Mm. They want the, no opposition in this country. They want all kinds of uh, constitutional posts which had got their uh, real ki haddi to to not do anything but for god's sake if you are calling the death of death of uh, opposition then that is not true in this country still there are the 10 states where the there is a, there are opposition governments in 1977 in 1989 count how many uh, states were ruled by opposition tell me how many states were ruled by opposition today there are the 10 states at least and all all of them are big states not the union territories like this so I think the BJP wants to create a narrative in this country and that is what the propaganda is doing. This country has been overwhelmed by the propaganda. Every minute there is a propaganda. Every minute half-truths are converted into the whole truth. The lies are being perpetuated as a cardinal, prin cardinal principle of the democracy. Okay. The fact of the matter is, if mimicry is wrong and criminal, please ban it. At least I, we all should know that now onwards we will not mimic anybody. If cartooning that the, and look at the where the cartooning is, the cartoon once was hailed as a great journalistic uh, uh, art form. Mm. Today that cartooning is dead because everybody's emotions are being hurt by that. Whether it is left, right, and center, everybody is being hurt. So the only thing which defined this year is is basically the massive decline of democracy in this country. Rise of intolerance, um, death of democracy. Sandeep Ashutosh says the opposition is alive and kicking, is just being thrown out of parliament. Uh, your take. See, first of all, uh, you know, I, I would consider statements like death of democracy, etc., are also creating a narrative. It's also creating a perception, but that's not my point. I think today, where well, we say there are several Indias, and among them, two Indias are. Uh, or one India definitely is the India that exists on Twitter, social media, and this thing. And that India, I believe, is quite apart from the rest of India, which is for people, the ordinary people. And uh, that's why we see a dichotomy and a divergence between what the Twitterity and people think and what we actually see getting translated on the ground. I think people on the ground would see this year as 
definitely an economic resurgence of the country. Uh, definitely, you know, uh, one can go statistics either way. You can discount the statistics which the government is giving, which is a discount uh, statistics which uh, a critics and economists, uh, you know, cherry pick and give. But if you see on a relative scale, uh, there has been a major shifting of the needle. And I, as a business person uh, who travel uh, through the thing and deal in a sector which is very, very fundamental to the country's growth because uh, it sees I, uh, I, I've been dealing in cement and I know what's exactly happening in cement. And cement, contrary to, again, the Twitter perception is not infrastructure. Most 60% of the cement sale comes from what is called individual house builders and individual house builders who buy cement in that way, not in terms of construction, come from the urban areas and rural areas. You know, and therefore, if you see, if cement is growing, by 15% uh, on a, uh, in certain months, and certainly on an average 9 to 10%, uh, that shows that there is action happening. If poor people can build homes, uh, they are obviously, uh, uh, things are not so bleak. But that's only one example, which I've said. Uh, people see a lot of difference in their quality of life, whether we want to deny the impact of digitization, which has happened, which has um, you know not only made business accessible. A lot of people uh, otherwise short time has uh, been uh, liberated. People are seeing. And therefore, there is a sense of hope. Where the disconnect happens, why just doles don't work with women? One part of the uh, women will take doles, but there are a younger set of women. I know this for a fact, again, from my work travels in places like MP, the younger people still voted, uh, or despite doles or anything, to BJP. They're not looking for doles. They're trying to see where will they, uh, what will be their future, whether they'll get job. Yes. Our next generation, even in uh, you know the affluent families, educated families, my kids look at their future very differently from what we do. You know, they are looking at opportunities in a different way. And I think that is where the transformation of India is happening, which in our you know, surround sound and echo chambers of uh, social media, we tend uh -huh. to forget. We provide entertainment to a small set of people by doing this Nura Koshtris, which is good, good for uh, 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 general uh, thing, you know, getting time pass, getting uh -huh. our uh, vent venting our uh, venom. I see discussions over drinks where I uh, meet Mr. Mehta uh, uh, across the aisle. Uh, so those are all very good. It's amusing to hear over here because I sit on the perch alone mm -hmm. most of the time. Not too many people know to have the kind of discussion. I've seen the discussion okay. just before mm -hmm. 3rd of December and I've seen discussions on 5th of December. Mm -hmm. So those are uh, uh, nice things to have. Okay. You know, the, politically, how do you see the year that has gone by? You know, uh, is it a, a, the lowest ebb for the opposition? Are you as optimistic as Ashutosh? You won't call it a write-off, but you're saying uh, the, the institutions are just, uh, you know, uh, it's the death of democracy, as he said. You know, I don't sort of uh, make sweeping statements. I mean, this is not fair. Uh, democracy indeed is gasping for breath. A dissociation that should make it more effective mm -hmm. and adoptable, even by the government. I want to flag certain things for your consideration. One, when 141 members of parliament were suspended from the House, Bridge <coughs> Bhushan Sharan was there, and Mr. Simha was there of Karnataka. And as, as pointed out by Ashu, Bidhuri Saab was also there. There is a lot of victimhood being played out on uh, which you were discussing offline of some member of parliament trying to ape the honorable chairman of Rajya Sabha. Uh, I have seen parliament for at least three decades and more. Unfortunate that I have never witnessed the kind of insensitivity or lack of space for the opposition as I'm seeing now, both in the Lok Sabha and the Raj Sabha. And I say this with all respect to both the chairpersons. And in fact, may I tell you, one of them 
I personally called on him. I have known him for some time and told him on his face. I told him when the questions are being raised by the opposition, sir, with due regards, the answers should come from the chair. The answers have to come from the treasury. Now take the case of the recent intrusion in parliament, which is very serious. And we should be of concern, not just to uh, the opposition, but it is of concern to the treasury as well. And it is of concern to all of us because they're the people whom we elect sit. And that is why it is called the Supreme Institution of India. We have a Supreme Court of India, but an institution above that is the Parliament of India because they make the laws. Now, the government has refused to take the floor in the House on the plea that the Speaker is the custodian of the House. Yes, he is the custodian of the House on paper. Yes, the premises belongs to the Speaker. But to suggest that on a security breach as serious as this, the Speaker's office shall be accountable and not the government. Now, that is a mimicry of democracy and the system. Nobody talks about that mimicry. On paper, as I said, the speaker is in charge. But in practice, if it is, as is stated by the investigators, an incident that suggests a terror intent, then does it remain in the domain of just the speaker? Is it not a fact that the Joint Secretary in charge of watch and ward, mm. they, that post is vacant for many months? That and now the, the government. You know, and that's the first point, but these are because there is a brute majority here. Now looking at. No, it's not. For... Brute majority, brute majority. That is where I say that often the government, I've heard them suggesting that they are the harbingers of political stability because they have numbered the numbers in the House. Mm. My humble suggestion to the government is that political stability is about stability in the society, about accommodation in the society. It is not about the tyranny of numbers in the House, A. And B, we don't need a strong government. We need a resolute and a sensitive government. That is what nurtures democracy. In my view, very humble view, there are other learned people who may have a point to make. Okay. Ashutosh, going, uh, Sandeep, you are on mute. One second. Uh, I just want to, Priya, uh, agree with Mr. Um, uh, Sharma, and I have myself tw tweeted right from day one. Uh, about the seriousness of the issue and the need for the government, even the Home Minister and others to make statements mm -hmm. and uh, the investigation precisely for the reasons which he has said. Okay. And, but my angst is the entire thing has been now uh, reduced to a, uh, you know, a farce and a cartoon by non-seriousness on both sides. And I've said this with my review of Pranam Mukherjee's book and with without, if somebody like Mr. Mukherjee was present in parliament today, either on the opposition or on the treasury side, I think the discourse would have been lifted to a different level and uh, uh, people like him would have, uh, you know, uh, uh, brought it to a different level, not allowing it to peter up because the real issue, hmm. this, this incident, if it was serious, it could have been much more serious. If it was actually much more serious than what happened in Taj or what happened in the earlier anniversary. Correct. So, cannot brush it away, hmm. uh, making it a, a, a this kind of a, a, a ridiculous situation. And Sorry. that is where, and hmm. when, when Jagdeep Dhankar was pointing out to a very senior parliamentarian yesterday in Rajya Sabha, uh, who was of the league and stature of Pranam Mukherjee, that is what the tragedy is. These people are not taking the lead, and they are letting, so, you know, in Pranam Mukherjee's book, they talk about Indrajit Gupta, and that we still have some people of that metal. And they need to take uh, also the leadership rather than let uh, some, uh, you know, uh, uh, people who are uh, much more British or um, people who are... Uh, um, <laughs> okay, uh, quickly, Ashutosh also wants to come in and tell us, you know, the... Uh, 
See, see, uh, Priya, I think the issue is much bigger than what we are debating today. Abhi, Sandeep is just talking about the economy. I just want to show a, a full write-up made by Economic Times. Soaring high end and the falling low end. Today, the demand at the uh, for the poor are getting much poorer. This is not my study. This is not the survey I did. Mm. The bigger cars are being sold much in numbers, but the two-wheelers uh, demand is going down. The, 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 the demand in the go. rural sector is is drastically going down. The demand in the mazdoor sector is drastically going down. This is not my research. This is done by Economic Times, one of the premier business newspaper of the country. Mm. The, prime, the, 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 the economy, which was growing at the 8% in, in 2015, 2016, and 2017, in 2013, we are nowhere near that numbers. Who is to be blamed for? Should the government take a responsibility for that or not? Or a few upper class, highly mobile section, if they are getting richer, if the billionaire's numbers is increasing, is that achievement for the country? Or the divide between the poor and the urban and the rich, if that grows, then the social conflict will emerge and the social conflict will finally lead to chaos and anarchy in the country. So the, and and look at the other aspect of it. Where is the federal where is the federal structure of the country? Every every governor in a, every opposition ruled state is at, on a war path. I can't imagine Arif Muhammad Khan calling a chief minister, a chief minister that he's ordering for killings. Can you imagine? These are the two, these are the two constitutional posts and they're fighting like cats and dogs. That the bills, the bills passed by the legislative assembly, the collective wisdom of the democracy is held up by one man. Is this one man is become so powerful that he will decide which law should be made? That uh, if we follow that, then the let kill the legislature. Let let kill the legislatures. Let kill the institution of chief ministers. Let there be only governors. Supreme Court has been saying every time, be it the Punjab governor, be it Tamil Nadu governor. B. Jagdeep Dhankar in, in Bengal, every day he was he was uh, rubbishing his own government. The whole government in West Bengal was run in his name. So what is happening? Are we, uh, where is the health of the democracy in this country? The parliament is, you see what is happening. How the governors are, every chief minister is going to the Supreme Court to seek some justice. Every, every state, and, and all the states which are ruled by the BJP governments, Chief Minister, the governors are keeping quiet. Everything is hunky-dory over there. Here, first time I had seen that legislature, legislator party was sitting there to elect a chief minister. A chit is given. And the prospect... That happens, Ashutosh. No, 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 let, let me complete. Let me complete. That happened. That no. See, this government did not come because to replicate what the Congress did, to imitate what the Congress did. The, the mandate was the mandate, the, such a mandate they got because the Congress did did blunders in this country. And what we are facing today is a result of it. Okay. So did Modi government and the BJP had got the mandate in 2004 to replicate all the mistakes of the Congress party? I'm sorry, that is not the mandate. Okay, no. I'm going to take a break and come back. And uh, this is a good point to come back to. Is the BJP making the mistakes the Congress is making? I'm going to come back to that after a very quick break. Welcome back to the round table. We're here looking at the year that was the, the takeaways from it. Uh, Vinod, I saw you raising a hand also. And that point Ashutosh made, is BJP making the same mistakes as Congress? I want to make uh, another short point. I not limit myself to the conflict, the confrontation between the governors and the chief ministers. Hmm. The bro broader point I want to make is that there has been a systematic emasculation of democratic institutions in India. When Donald Trump refused to accept the verdict in the United States, the system was saved by the institutions there. His own vice president stood by the Constitution and carried out the task that was expected of, of him as the chairman of Senate. In our country, we are seeing a very, very disconcerting scenario of institutions 
who represent institutional democracy as opposed to popular democracy, they are being emasculated, weakened progressively. Yes, chief ministers are rushing to Supreme Court. But in the judgment on 370, have you read the comments of Narima? Have you read the comments of others, senior retired judges? That judgment, if it is, stays the way it is, is a major subversion of the federal structure in this country. We are a unitary system with federal features, which mm -hmm. came to us wide Supreme Court judgments over the years. The decentralization of power, the distribution of power under the constitutional scheme, that is under serious threat. And any person who prides in Indian brand of democracy, which festers international repute uh, because uh, we were, even before we signed any of the instrumentalities uh, that uh, any nuclear power should before getting recognition, that mm -hmm. we were hailed as a responsible nuclear power on account of our system. Now, what is happening now? What is, you see, we may be, we may, we may be uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, wooed and we may be taken along by big powers because of our market uh, strength, you know, uh, because we are an emerging market. We have emerged, our markets which has actually emerged and they are all looking for destinations to invest. Hmm. But that should not make us lose sight of our standing as a, a democratic country of long standing, barring a brief interregnum. And third, lastly, hmm. yes, Congress made many mistakes, but it was under Congress rule during prior Indira Gandhi that the Jagmohan Lal Sina judgment came. Did it or did it not? The High Court judgment against Indira Gandhi, disposing her of her membership, came during her tenure. And that made, made her impose emergency, and she had to lift that emergency eventually and go for the democratic course. What I am saying is that every right thinking Indian must join his heads and hands, regardless of his predilections, political predilections, to save institutional democracy in our country. Okay. It is being put to death. That is being put to death, not democracy per se. But, this, but institutional democracy, which saves countries at the time of crisis. So Sandeep, serious uh, ish concerns here voiced by both Ashutosh and Vinod. You know, institutions are in danger, the federal structure is in danger, uh, too many face-offs, uh, too less governance happening. So first of all, let me say again on the issue of governors and the face-offs, I have no difference with either Vinod or Ashutosh. I have myself said that that is undesirable, but one can again dip into the reasons. If you say a lot of the confrontations which are happening, whether uh, everything is kosher on the other side, whether the governors are actually, uh, whether it was Dhankar or Arif Mohammed or Ravi in uh, Tamil Nadu, all these people, are they just locking horns for the sake of it or not? That's a separate debate. But the fact that so many confrontations happening, I think that is an uneasy point. Second point, whether BJP is going the Congress way, it could well be. But the problem is Cong it took Congress uh, uh, 20 years to unravel. Maybe it will take BJP 20 years, if not 20 years, 10, 10 more years to unravel. The tragedy there is, at that point in time, much of the unraveling, even though, say, a Janta Party experiment could have been a failure, or subsequently a VP Singh movement didn't yield anything, a lot of it has happened because of the counter-traction created by the opposition. BJP could be, BJP at least has not gone to the stage of making president sign uh, ordinances sitting in the bathtub or uh, from the bed or letting a president appoint somebody as a prime minister out of turn. But they may well do it in future following these footsteps. If they say, oh, this was done also earlier and we do it, that's no excuse. I totally uh, agree. But who are going to uh, hold that in check? Because today, till yesterday, uh, till one week ago, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Chandrachur was the darling of the left wing, and everybody thought he is, and people who tweeted, oh, huge respect for Mr. Chandrachur, they suddenly have now become his st strongest critic. 
I have the highest regard for Mr. Nariman. Mr. Nariman has given a certain point. I've heard his interview with Barkha and others, uh, whereas he is very specific. His son has also made comments, uh, whose I think some people consider him to be, if not equal, even a, uh, if not bigger, equal uh, in terms of jurisprudence, like his dad and people. They have said those are points of view. But there is at, at the same time, if you're respecting institutions, uh, you know, Gogoi was a hero when he went and did the press conference. But next day, people said, oh, he has been, uh, uh, you know, bought out and he has given the Ram Mandir judgment. Today, I don't know what they will uh, talk about a Chandrachur, but there is a five-member bench. If the five-member bench has given a verdict, after hearing that uh, tallest, uh, uh, you know, or lawyers, we must respect it or we must challenge it for revision. Let's go to institutional route rather than quoting when it suits you somebody else's opinion. That is where I think there has to be a more greater balance uh, in the whole situation. True, there are a lot of cases which people, uh, uh, you know, people like me who are uh, not card-carrying members of a party or, uh, for that matter, don't have allegiance. We say. Statistics, as I write right in the beginning, I said there are statistics, you know, are uh, 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 probably, as they say, you know, uh, uh, it, it reveals what is um, uh, suggestive and hides what is vital. I, I'm telling you from my experience of selling a basic commodity, rural mm -hmm. demand is what has uh, held this country, uh, uh, the cement industry, even during COVID, mm -hmm. even right now happening. When that, uh, the same economists will come and explain to you why less two wheelers are being sold is because public transport has improved. People are opting for public transport more and people else. So, those, you know, economics explanations, I think we yeah, must no, take. Either way. Okay, quickly, call. we're out of time. So we know that then Ashutosh, one quick word, if you will. Uh... No, uh, my fellow Pamela, I forget his name, Mr. Ghosh, isn't it? Yes. Sandeep Ghosh, yes. Uh, Mr. Ghosh, uh, nobody is a card-carrying member here. Mm. But I must make a complete disclosure that I have always been a democratic ally of politics that has leaned towards the left of the that center. Was not meant to for you. Yeah. Uh, no, but you know, this kind of McCarthyism is not acceptable. Right. That is also anti democratic. Please, this is not fair between people, civilized people having a discussion. No, it was. You can make a. You, you, you can. You, no, you can. I, you can. I'm an independent no, sir, people, a brand sir, I'm sorry. If, if I mistook you, I'm sorry, but you can uh, see the recording again when it plays and you would know. But huh. any, in, in any case, me, huh. uh, I'm not, I don't want to uh, emphasize this issue any further. Sir, nobody is questioning Justice Chandra Chud. It is my right to question a judgment of the Supreme Court. Okay. And on that same Supreme Court was a judge on the same bench, Justice Call, who just a few days back had expressed surprise that why an why a why a case listed for him to be heard was suddenly disappeared from the list, and that was on judicial appointments. There is something. The smoke is not without fire, sir. Okay. And let us be cynical. When, go, when, 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 really when, no, when, hmm. when government cease to be cynical, people have to turn cynical. They have to question. Okay. Uh, yes. Priya, right, the, the fact of the matter is that Supreme Court took almost four and a half years to listen to Article 370. That itself is a comment on the functioning and the independence of the judiciary in this country. Why this was not done in six months' time? Several habeas corpus petitions were never heard in this country. And the democracy means the preservation of individual liberty. Today, the High Court is saying, I am granting you bail. But for three months, you can't go out because Supreme Court has to listen. What is happening here? Is liberty the most important uh, constitutional element of a democracy or the bail? Or the so I'm 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 mm -hmm. I'm sometimes I'm really I fail to understand that what is happening here. Yes. Uh, have we forfeited our right to criticize Supreme Court? No. Have we forfeited our right to criticize Justice uh, Chandrachud? No. Have we forfeited our right to criticize President? No. Have we forfeited to criticize Prime Minister? No. But the okay. when and when Prime Minister of the country will face the Parliament and face questions? When the Home Minister will come and face questions? No. If they are not coming, that means democracy is 
in ICU. Okay, on that very grave note, I think, but all this is happening, yes, but at the same time, they are still winning elections and still getting elected. So at the end of the day, it is also the voice of the public that one has to take into account. But on that note, I wish you a very happy new year and thank you for taking part on this roundtable. Thank you. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.